Hello and welcome to StatPro training courses. Today we will see how to specify the floor spectrum analysis parameters. During a seismic event, the floors of a multi-story structure will experience movements that could be very different from the ground movement. We can then consider the floor as the ground of the substructure or the equipment that it is supporting and analyze that structure using the floor movement data. This data is exactly what is generated by a floor spectrum analysis. So how is the floor spectrum generated? We first start by inputting the ground movement profile. A time history analysis is then performed and the program will monitor the displacements of the floor under consideration to come up with a new time history profile of the floor. Note that here the ground movement is described using a time profile as a, a displacement, acceleration, or velocity versus time. The ground movement could also be a response spectrum chart. In this case, the program will start by converting the ground response spectrum into a time history profile, and the following steps will remain the same. In our common example, we will be using a time history profile as our input data. The user is requested to check the documentation for the requirements of the ground response spectrum method. Once the time history profile of the floor movement is generated, the program then applies the time history load to a virtual shaking table, which consists of multiple single degrees of freedom oscillators and captures their maximum responses. In other words, the program will solve this equation for a range of frequencies and for each specified damping ratio. As a result, we obtain the floor spectrum. Note that the program monitors a group of nodes and uses the average values of their responses. As we have seen in the previous section, we will need to first run a time history analysis and then specify the floor spectrum parameters to generate it. The time history analysis part is a two-step process. We first define the time history load. We then create a load case that will use that definition and perform the analysis. After the analysis instructions, we specify the parameters of the floor spectrum generation. For more information on time history analysis, please refer to the documentation or one of the recorded courses. In the first section of the parameters, we define the directions for which we want to generate the floor spectrum and the groups of nodes that we wish to monitor. In the second section of the parameters, we specify the range of frequencies that we need to analyze. You remember this equation, right? It will be solved for each of the frequencies included in that range. In the last section, we will specify the damping ratios for which we want the floor spectrum to be generated. Note that uh, these damping ratios are those of the secondary structure, not the primary structure. Then we have the option to consider the relative acceleration. By default, the program will consider the absolute acceleration. Finally, the last options will print out some analysis detail in the output file. Besides the detailed information we can retrieve in the text output file, the POST processor offers some interesting graphical options. Now let's put all we have seen in practice. The equipment is represented here only for sake of clarity. In the model we are going to analyze, it was entered simply as a load. Okay. Since we will be performing a dynamic analysis, we need to first define the mass model. In this case, I'm using reference load, as you can see here. The type is set to mass so that the program understands that all the masses included here should be used for any dynamic analysis. And here we accounted for the self-weight of the structure itself, and we also entered the weight of the equipment, and the forces are applied on the supporting points of the equipment. We now need to create a time history definition, okay? and in this example we will be using an external file that includes several pairs of points describing the acceleration versus time, so we make sure that the acceleration type is selected here, and we will specify the name of the external file. The external file should be on a, in the same folder as the start pro input file, and we add it. Before we move to define the parameters, let me show you the other option I mentioned earlier, the ground response spectrum. So if you don't want to 
use a time history profile, but rather a ground response spectrum. So this is where you will need to define your spectrum. Now, for the parameters, we have the time step, so we can leave the default value. It's okay. If we need to change it, we can change it later. As to the damping, so 5% is exactly what we want. We just need to specify the arrival time, which uh, tells the program that uh, the acceleration will hit all supports, all the supports at the same time. So we can set it to zero and we add it. The next step is to create a load case that will use this definition. Note that only one load case is authorized in a floor spectrum analysis. So the load case is here. We just need to open it and we will add the definition we've just created. So we'll go to the time history page and we select ground motion. We select the direction in which, in which we want the acceleration to, to be applied to the structure. The arrival time, we have defined only one. Under defined types, we have defined only one time history profile. For the response type, we will select the absolute option since we want the absolute acceleration of the floor and we accept. Our load case is now created. We just need to enter the analysis instruction before moving to the floor spectrum parameters. So define commands and we'll run a perform analysis. Now, while we are here, we can select the generate floor spectrum. So the ground acceleration is directed in the X direction, but we want to monitor the movement of our floor in both the global X and global Z. It could also be only one direction. We need to specify which nodes need to be uh, monitored. So you can either specify the list of nodes, and this is done in the text file, or you can select a group. So I created a group of nodes that I can refer to. So FL floor top. And now we need to specify the minimum frequency and the highest frequency. So we're moving from almost 0 to 33 with an increment of, let's say, 0 0.5. So the program will generate a point of the response spectrum every half hertz going from 0 to 33. Damping ratio is a damping ratio of the of the equipment so we can ask the program to generate as many response spectra as we need so with a damping of 0 0.5 another one with a damping of 7 percent and here we will just leave the absolute acceleration and we can print out some of the intermediate results and we just select add. Okay, let me show you the floor group groups and highlight. So these are the nodes on which the equipment is supported. So these are the nodes I'm monitoring. Okay, the model has been analyzed. Let's uh, check now if there is any information in the output file. And we need to make sure that we have captured the contribution of all the modes or enough modes. So we will check that by going to the mass participation factor. By default, STAR is considering only the first six modes. And this, this is what we can see here. And in terms of mass participation factor, we can see here that uh, with the six first modes, we are capturing about 92% of uh, in the X direction and 89% in the Z directions. If we, if we estimate that this is not enough, then we will need to increase the number of modes. And the other one is to include the missing masses. So let's go back to the input file. So we'll go to the analysis, miscellaneous commands, and cutoff mode shape. I have already tested it, so with 50, we are reaching almost 100%, so let's go with that. Okay, one more thing, so for the small amount that is still missing, just to show you in case you need it, how to include the missing masses, so uh, this can be found in the definition of the time history analysis. Double click on the definition and just check this box here and accept. Okay, we can now restart the analysis. Let's go to the output file, mass participation factor. And we can see here that we are already almost at 100%. So we have in the X direction 99.7 and almost 100% in the Z direction. So we can estimate that this is, this is very satisfactory. What about the missing masses? So the program is printing out 
a calculation here about the missing masses and the detail of the importance for each mode and so on. So this is where you can find it. And then you will have the, the points, the details of your response spectrum, the flow response spectrum given here. So you have multiple points, the frequencies, you remember we asked for a frequency every 0.5 Hertz. So we have for each frequency, we have the displacement, the velocity, the acceleration and the peak time for the acceleration. It means at what time did this acceleration happen? Okay. Now, if you want to see the, all the results in a graphical mode, just go to the post-processing mode and we'll go to the layout here, dynamic in the dynamic uh, tools layout and you can select floor spectrum and here you go. So he will select the group. So we have the same group, the, three, the six nodes here, and uh, we have uh, direction X and a damping 5%, 7%. So if we move to 7%, if you go to in the Z direction, you have very uh, low values in the Z direction because nothing is really happening in that direction. So the most important direction is the X and you have the the five percent or the seven percent so you can double uh, right click on the diagram and just this is a logarithmic graph you can ask for a linear graph okay and the other thing that you may do is either you copy those values and use them in the analysis of your equipment or you can just save the data here which is equivalent to what you can get uh, with the with this table I think you now know all what you need to use this feature in Star Pro. With this, we conclude our session today. Thank you.